Money cannot buy happiness. This is a fact that I think more people should accept. But on the contrary, it can rent it for a while because I have never been happier in my entire life than I have been with the M1 Max MacBook Pro. And I had expectations that I guess were fairly high, but my god, Apple has exceeded them and I'm throwing that statement out there. Yes, this is the best laptop ever made. Obviously, that's a very subjective opinion-based title, but one that I'm comfortable having on the internet as the Apple Sheep as someone who uses my laptop for live streaming, for video editing, for podcasting, for media consumption, and basically if you're not a gamer, this is the best laptop I think out there because gaming has never been Apple's strong suit and I have a feeling it never will be, but in today's video I'll be recapping everything that I love and even the few drawbacks and a few signs of criticism that I'll give to Apple's latest generation MacBook and the most expensive Apple product I've bought pretty much of all time. Let's begin. It's hard to pick a singular point of upgrade to start with because Apple really left nearly no stone unturned. It's actually easier to list the things that Apple didn't change with this MacBook because there's less of those. For one, Touch ID is still there. Uh, it's still a magic keyboard, although they did get rid of the touch bar and now have the full function key sizes, which I kind of do miss the touch bar. I wouldn't have minded if Apple kept it around. I get why they didn't keep it, but still the full size function keys look a lot better. They're easier to tap on and reach. So so if you're gonna have a keyboard and you're not gonna embrace the touch bar, I have to admit this is the way to do it. The touch ID sensor feels larger. I don't know if it technically has a larger surface area, but it's much easier to reach than the old touch ID button. And the black behind the keys is so much better, like immerses yourself in the backlit keyboard a lot more. And I appreciate that contrast that is more noticeable. So here I am, even when I'm trying to list the things that haven't changed, I go off on some rampage about all the things I like about the keyboard design, but the track pad has basically remained the same. It's like the same size and that's honestly fine. I don't really know what else they could have done with the trackpad. I appreciate the size of it. It's kind of unmatched with other laptops out there because of how satisfying the haptic feedback is and how much room you have to move the mouse around. Anytime I try other laptops out there, they always look at the trackpad as like a backup. It's like a secondary thing, whereas I actually have not paired my Magic Mouse to this MacBook Pro a single time since getting it. All of my videos that you guys have watched across the Telosev network have been done just with the trackpad and while I probably will prefer a mouse later on I can live with this the goal of me buying a MacBook Pro in case some of you are wondering Drew I thought you were gonna get a Mac mini or a Mac Pro of some kind well me and my wife have decided that we want to take more trips because we've kind of been stuck at home for a very long time working and I want something that I can take with me so that we can take more prolonged trips in the future and still get work done so I wanted to see like how little I could live with with this Mac and how little stuff I really would have to pack and it exceeded my expectations with how much the onboard hardware requires very very little additional accessories which I have to give some massive props for because this is an amazing trackpad that is very responsive very intuitive and I've been able to edit very efficiently with this laptop thanks to this massive trackpad but aside from touch ID keyboard and trackpad man pretty much every other aspect of this MacBook has changed first of all I I love this chassis design. I love having the rounded bottom with a flat top. It feels very functional and practical and industrial at the top, while at the same time, this is by far one of the more comfortable laptops Apple has ever made. Whenever you pick it up, it doesn't cut into your hands as much as the last generation did. So that rounded underbody feels much, much better whenever you pick up the laptop to take it into a different room, which I've done a lot of, by the way. I've edited videos on the couch. I've edited videos in the bedroom. I've watched a ton of movies and TV shows with this laptop in different rooms of the house and man that brings me to probably one of the strongest points of these new laptops the displays apple went all out with these things and i feel pretty confident actually saying these are the best displays on any product that apple has ever made we can get all technical with third-party displays and that kind of thing but i'm gonna go out on a limb and say it's one of the best screens i've ever looked at because it has the 120 hertz promotion display even if there's some apps that don't support it i'm sure they will in time and for the most part the 
majority of apps like Discord and Twitter and Final Cut and even just moving the mouse around and moving windows around the display, I do really appreciate that high refresh rate, as you guys know from my iPhone 13 review. Like, that was the singular feature I was willing to upgrade for, and the fact that at the last minute we got 120 hertz is, oh, it's so beautiful. And on top of that, that doesn't come at the compromise of the dynamic range. The mini LED does provide insanely good brightness, especially when you're watching content in HDR. I don't often do it, but when I do, it's honestly really, really impressive, like how deep the black pixels get when you're watching movies and shows, which we've watched several on this thing, and the black bars on that content, because nothing is really shot at 16 by 10, blend into the bezel like perfectly. I cannot tell where the pixels end and the bezel begins, and I love how thin the side and top bezel is, and yes, after using this MacBook for a while, I don't mind the notch at all. All of my suspicions about a notch on a MacBook were correct about, for one, you can blend it into the menu bar very, very easily. I have never once found a single application in my workflow that clutters up the menu bar to the point where it starts bleeding into the space where the notch is. And frankly, if you're using that many options and that many widgets in your menu bar, getting rid of the notch was probably not going to help you anyway. You were probably going to fill up that entire thing and still run out of space. And I don't like how busy those desktops look. I've seen the screenshots of people who stuff a crap ton of menu items up there and a crap ton of widgets. I'm not a fan. I'm okay with the minimal design approach, and this sounds crazy, I think I'm a bit of a sociopath, but I actually kind of wanted to embrace the notch more, because when I had a blackish, darkish wallpaper where you couldn't really tell the notch was there, I felt like the text and the icons at the top of the display weren't truly showcasing how thin that top bezel was, and I'm kind of a sucker for thin, universal bezel size all the way around. I love it on my iPhone, and of course I love it on my iPad, so I kind of wanted to embrace the notch a tad more and ended up changing my wallpaper in order to fully get that full screen display effect. And honestly, I like it a lot. I don't see the notch as an intrusion. I see the display as expanding upward. And if you don't like the notch because you do view it as an intrusion, it's so dang easy to erase. You can just like full screen any application or download like any number of apps that I'm sure have already been made that allow you to, you know, reduce the screen size a tad or just blacken out the top. I know many people out there are saying that the bezels should be just this thin, but Apple should have somehow found a way to reduce the size of the webcam and cram it up in the top bezel. Other laptops out there have done it, right? They have fairly thin bezels and the webcam is built up there. The thing is, the laptops that do that do not have very impressive webcams, which I don't like that compromise personally because I do very much plan on using the built-in webcam on this machine because it is great. It's a 1080p image that I've used across dozens of live streams at this point and people all around are pretty much universally accepted of it that like, wow, for a laptop webcam, this is actually pretty dang good. It's much better than the webcam on my iMac Pro. The image signal processor does a great job at variably adjusting the exposure settings, whereas my iMac Pro, for whatever reason, was very clunky with the exposure settings. Like, I could just move my head around the screen and it would flicker a lot trying to adjust to the different lighting scenarios, whereas on the M1 Max chip, it basically instantly adjusts when I turn on my studio light or turn it off. It's good at low light performance and it's still a webcam at the end of the day, so yeah, this isn't going to be iPhone levels of video quality, but I think that's okay because what webcams are used for is the web. When you're FaceTiming, there's going to be a crap ton of compression anyway, or when you're live streaming, there's inevitable compression that you just can't avoid. That's just a fact. So even if it's not 4K or whatever, it doesn't really matter to me because it's very practical and I'm glad Apple didn't compromise on the webcam quality. Sure, some of you probably would have preferred it if they, you know, left the webcam the same crappy quality and stuffed it up into the bezel and there wasn't a notch, but I'm glad they made this compromise because I guess it caters to my use case, so I don't mind it, but I guess my condolences if the notch still bothers you for some reason. I just ask myself, how can it not bother you on a phone, but it does bother you on a Mac? Because on the phone, it takes up so much more space. But I'm happy that I was able to do so many live streams off this MacBook, and on top of that, so far, I have never once used a dongle with this MacBook Pro. That's right. My black magic I'm recording with right now goes to SD cards, which are much smaller and more compact than CFast cards anyway, and the fact that the MacBook now has brought back the SD card slot, even though I've never owned a MacBook that had one, so now that it's there, it's kind of nice, I'll be honest, you know, to not have to go find that USB-C adapter and I can just slide the SD card right in there. I don't mind using adapters, like, I know in the past I've defended Apple going all in on USB-C, and I personally was fine with that, but clearly they were expecting 
expecting more of the market to adopt more accessories to type C and that just didn't happen so after five years of Apple trying to push the industry onto something else they just didn't find much luck with it and now at this point having none of these legacy ports was becoming more of a drawback and more of a downside more so than it was a Apple attempting to get more people to switch because if you've been trying to get people to switch for five years and companies still aren't doing it then yeah I, I agree it's like you kind of made the right call to bring these back in that regard again I still would have loved this MacBook if it only had four Thunderbolt ports and no other legacy ports that's definitely not the reason I bought it but yes if there are any legacy ports on a machine I'm gonna utilize them if I can so I haven't needed an adapter and the one time I typically would have with this MacBook probably would have been for my external microphone that I typically would record my podcasts with or live stream with but the truth is the upgraded studio quality mics on this thing are so dang good that people don't even notice half the time that I've stopped using my external mic. I've been doing lots of live streams with it both on the EV channel and the tech channel and usually as soon as I bring that up in the stream I wait until I'm like 45 minutes in I tell people hey you know by the way these are the internal microphones and I typically get five to ten comments that go oh wow I didn't even notice like people think I haven't changed my audio setup but the truth is I'm using a totally different microphone but it's able to capture a decent amount of bass it's able to still reach those mids and highs just in case you haven't watched or listened to any of the latest Talos of Tech podcasts this is what the onboard microphones sound like I use them during my live streams and I'm amazed I think they sound great I'm sure there are better microphones in the world but again I'm kind of experimenting with this setup to figure out what exactly can I get away with so I don't have to pack around my external mic every time we go on a trip if I know that I can record podcasts and do live streams with the microphone that's already built in that saves me a ton of hassle and that means my suitcase doesn't have to be packed to the brim with tech equipment so the microphones exceeded my expectations and because I've yet to see anyone really complain about the microphone quality thus far I'm just gonna keep on using the internal ones of course now that I say that I'm gonna get eight people that say actually drew I noticed but I didn't say anything yeah okay sorry you were too late the sampling is over I've got my feedback now I'm not gonna listen to you troll so internal mic the way to go and that also carries on to the speaker quality like I was just as wowed when I first got OBS I recorded a video with the internal mics and I just wanted to see how I sounded I played it back and the speaker system surprised me like I know Apple uses their kind of weird marketing limbo of you know it sounds like spatial audio like the audio is coming from all around you even though it's just in front of the MacBook but the truth is like man like it, it genuinely starts to feel like it's coming from all around you. I have never once been editing or using this machine and thought to myself, man, I should grab some external speakers to connect these two because the onboard ones get very, very loud. I hardly ever turn them up all the way because if you're typically that close to a laptop, it's kind of overbearing to have that much sound. And again, we've watched a ton of movies and TV shows with these onboard speakers and they sound fantastic. So once again, that's why I have to come back to one of the best laptops ever made, the best laptop laptop ever made because there's so little additional hardware you really need with it and I will admit that even though I haven't used an adapter and I have been using the SD card slot every day I have yet to ever need the HDMI port so if you go back and watch my videos from earlier in the year I did mention that the SD card slot is like the one legacy port I could understand bringing back HDMI less so because you know I think that Thunderbolt can replace a lot of tasks for that but I'm glad it's there like I don't mind it being there because I know there's people that want to dock this to their you know third-party monitors or their TVs or take a project to school and connect it to the projector and that type of thing so it's nice that you don't need an adapter for HDMI but in my workflow it hasn't come up and I don't really see it coming up anytime soon like if I want to throw something on the TV my TV has airplay so I'll just you know throw it up there that way but, but while we're on the subject of ports that brings me to MagSafe which I've never owned a laptop with MagSafe actually before and now that it's here I can confidently say I don't mind it like it's not a really really impressive feature that I'm wowed by I was mostly just hoping that Apple would still let me charge my MacBook with USB-C if I preferred that but the included MagSafe cable is pretty great I mean it's braided and it's fairly long the main reason I hadn't enjoyed MagSafe in the past because I would used my sister's or my wife's old laptop that also had MagSafe is because oftentimes we would be using it in bed and it would be really easy for that charger to pop off but the thing is this MacBook has battery life that 
is so insanely good that we've actually never charged it outside of where it sits on my desk. I've never seen battery life this strong on a MacBook before. I know that there has never been a Mac I've ever used in my life, Intel or with Apple Silicon, that's been capable of basically doing everything I need a computer to do on a full work schedule, which for me is typically like two 4K at 60 edited videos, you know, importing them, editing them, exporting them, and uploading them, and then also like a live stream of some kind. And I've been able to comfortably do two videos and a live stream on a single charge without it dying, which I've never seen a computer capable of. And of course, the fans basically never kick in. You barely hear them. And the only time I've ever been able to kill this MacBook in a single day, as in like down below 10% to where I had to plug it in, was when I was actually podcasting, which I only do once a week, but I was doing a podcast for Talos of Movie Reviews, followed by Talos of EV, and then Talos of Tech. So that involves like prolonged FaceTime call and recording through OBS simultaneously. And I don't think OBS is a very power efficient program because pretty much any time I use OBS, it brings any battery to its knees. And FaceTiming, of course, isn't really great for your battery life because, you know, you're streaming your face call to other people while simultaneously downloading information to yourself and sending them to your headphones. So that's the one time I've been able to kill this in a single day. But outside of that, editing in Final Cut does not budge this thing. Even exporting content doesn't tank the battery life. So I'm extremely impressed that I can pretty much always do a full day's work on the MacBook battery life. And on top of that, they even add fast charging now. Like when I got the battery down low, I plug it in with the 140 watt brick and boom, within like 20, 30 minutes, this thing is already back to 50%. And that honestly has me slightly concerned for the battery health in the long run. But I think with optimized battery charging, this battery should be fine for the most part. But I'm just thankful that even if you have another USB-C cable lying around, you can still use a fairly fast charge rate. You won't get the full 140 watts, but honestly, I think 140 watts is kind of overkill for these things. Oftentimes, I charge my MacBook with the 30 watt USB-C brick I typically just use for my iPad, and 90% of the time, that's still enough to gain this thing a charge. Even when I'm editing videos, watching YouTube, and live streaming, 30 watts is enough to power the thing and increase the battery percentage. It's just the FaceTime and OBS podcasting that wasn't able to increase the charge rate with 30 watts. So that was the first time I actually needed to use the 140 watt brick, but it's honestly like a joke how good the battery life is. We will be watching a movie or a show and just streaming in the bedroom or on the couch or something and like don't see the battery life budge for hours. It just basically stays around the same length and even when I'm editing content, it's not a problem. So battery life, best I've ever seen in a laptop considering the workflows I'm throwing at this thing and all while staying relatively cool, you know? I'm so used to MacBooks in the past getting really, really hot and you feel it in your lap or you feel it on your palms. This is the first MacBook I've thrown a ton of footage at and exports at and live streams at and I never really feel it get warm. It, it mainly stays cold all the time, which is incredible. Some people are likely upset about the three Thunderbolt ports, but I personally have a hard time understanding what use case people had out there where they needed four Thunderbolt ports and one of those ports was not being occupied by uh, some kind of HDMI or SD card slot reader or power source of some kind. So the fact that, okay, they dropped one Thunderbolt port in favor of three very, very common legacy ports that most people had to access through adapters anyway. That's why it doesn't bother me. Also, these are Thunderbolt 4 now and they have individual buses on the motherboard. I don't know what I'm talking about, but basically each individual port can go full speed. Whereas in the past, the older MacBook Pros, they had like shared speeds between each each side of the MacBook. So they're better ports, but overall, yeah, I wouldn't have minded if they had four Thunderbolt ports. I don't think I would run into a situation where I needed that many. So far, I've never used more than one Thunderbolt port at a time, but yeah, the current IO situation is great and fantastic. So what overall complaints do I have with this MacBook? Because I've been in the nonstop praise at this point as to why it's amazing. Okay, the speakers are great, battery's great, specs are great, M1 Max is insanely fast, more than twice as fast as my iMac Pro. Um, yeah, face ID or center stage would have been nice. That was one of those like last minute wishes that I was thinking, you know, Apple brought it to a $300 iPad, so couldn't you bring it to a $2,000 laptop? But I guess maybe it can't fit in the display lid for whatever reason, but that's certainly something I would have appreciated. I'm not gonna upgrade my entire laptop just for Face ID though, because with the Apple Watch, the Mac unlocks incredibly quick to most of the time I don't even use Touch ID. It 
pretty much unlocks as long as my Apple Watch is unlocked, which is all day. So the only time I'm using Touch ID is when I'm entering certain passwords on certain websites or installing certain software. It's not typically the biometric that I'm using to unlock the Mac with. So yes, I'm all in favor though of Apple adding it in the future. I think that for authorizing different, you know, users and profiles through Mac OS, it would be so much nicer if the computer could just look at you right away or entering certain passwords, it could just look at you right away instead of you having to rest your finger on the Touch ID sensor. Again, not willing to buy a whole new computer for it, but would have appreciated that. Another slight detail that I would have liked Apple to do is kind of pulled what they did with the 24 inch iMac, which is not meant to be a pro machine. You know, it's meant to be like the family computer that sits in the kitchen. It's like all colorful and it's meant for everyday people, but they still offer ethernet through the power brick. And basically you can get ethernet through the power cable to the iMac. Since Apple kind of like redesigned MagSafe 3 on this thing and it is a pro machine, it is something that I could see a lot of people docking with external monitors with all the Thunderbolt ports and HDMI and whatnot. So if they would have offered that through this new MagSafe standard where, you know, the USB-C brick can still be Type-C, but we know Type-C can do power and data simultaneously. I'm no expert, so correct me if this isn't possible, but wouldn't it have been possible for Apple to make like a charge brick for the MacBook that you can also plug Ethernet into just like the iMac and that way you can get a LAN connection through the MagSafe port on your MacBook? I don't know, there was no rumors or leaks of that happening, but it would have been nice to have an Ethernet back backup option instead of just having to use an adapter. Although I've never once used an adapter to get Ethernet on this MacBook and the live streams have been fairly stable. My iMac Pro live streams were all over Ethernet and my MacBook live streams are all over Wi-Fi. Haven't noticed any difference in latency or lag, so I don't really care that much about it, just saying it would have been nice. Same thing with HDMI, you know, it feels like they kind of went cheap on it by giving it 2.0 instead of 2.1. Not a huge deal to me though, because like if you want a 4K high refresh rate monitor if you want 6k or something like that or 8k monitors you've got thunderbolt still so it's like okay it would have been cool to do it with hdmi as well but you've still got three thunderbolt ports to choose from if you want like a really really powerful high resolution high frame rate external monitor and how many people are plugging in like you know three pro display xdrs and another 4k display and do they want that additional 4k display to also be high refresh rate yeah it's a little much i'm not gonna say it's a huge missed opportunity but it's one i would have liked to have seen. Also, the color choices. I know this is a very insignificant detail for pros, but I was kind of hoping they could take it in a different direction than just gray in grayer, as Justin Long once said. I would have liked like a matte black option or something like that. I even think there's a lot of pros out there that would like more colorful laptops. It's kind of this weird marketing trope that like pros have to be more muted and entry-level products can be more colorful. Like I would have liked the product red laptop too. That would have been great, but no big deal because the color doesn't impact anything at all but overall Apple has blown my expectations out of the water with insane performance and I've been able to export videos that used to take 24 minutes and under nine minutes now the live streams have been great I've loved the sound quality of the speakers the display is super immersive I love the high refresh rate so without a doubt my new favorite Apple product of all time this trumps the 2018 iPad Pro for me so that's gonna be my go-to answer now whenever someone says drew what's your favorite Apple product ever I've I've never seen a Mac go through this many substantial upgrades and see this large a performance gain. It's like, it's a spec boost to say the least, but it's also a design overhaul, but it's also a display upgrade, but it's also an IO overhaul. And literally like every type of upgrade you can imagine was basically granted with this thing. Better battery, better displays, better speeds, better speakers, better microphones, better webcam, like all in one year to year upgrades. I've never seen a massive change like this and I'm very, very happy that I get to use it every day. I look forward to working every day because I know I get to play around more with the MacBook and the display is frankly so good that it's kind of ruined all other external monitors for me. I've been like looking around to find a good, clean, minimal, aesthetically pleasing, high refresh rate monitor and nothing matches the MacBook Pro because this is basically the best display in the world. I know that that's fairly subjective, but for the features that I think matter in most people's machines, I'd say this is as best as it gets. I don't play video games like hardly ever so I'm sorry I don't have feedback in that regard but I think most people are fully aware Macs are not really intended for gaming that's not what this is about but for the creators out there for the audio engineers the misfits and the video editors and the live streamers and the fans of movies the fans of music and for people who need to write software and that type of thing
thing. These new MacBook Pros have blown my expectations out of the water. I'm in love with the battery life and I'm in love with how much capability this Apple Silicon now has. And that's why I don't plan on upgrading this MacBook for probably another five years. I held on to my iMac Pro for nearly four and then this Apple Silicon transition happened and I really don't think I'm ever going to find a monumental speed improvement from the M1 Max like I did with my iMac Pro because I'm shaving off like 15 minutes worth of time on every single export I do and I do several a day and now that my exports are down to like under nine minutes for a lot of my content I don't really see how I can shave another 15 minutes off again until the exports are instant which we probably have you know a decade or so before my videos can be exported within a second I don't think the M2 Max will be that fast or even the M3 Max which is why even though I'm sure there will be good upgrades and worthy reasons to buy the new MacBook Pros I still plan on holding on to this one basically until it breaks and stops working. Overall, this is why it's the best laptop ever made, and you're welcome to disagree with me. I don't care, because I'm a happy Apple sheep. I've never had so much fun reviewing a Mac before, so I'm going to comfortably edit this video now and enjoy every second of it. Feel free to leave your hate and dislikes in the comments below. This is your Apple sheep here. I'll see you in the next one.